Good morning, everyone, and thank you for coming. In late April, I agreed to take on the role of CEO of Nalco Energy. Since that time, I have been focused on reviewing all aspects of the Muskrat Falls project. I reviewed a lot of information and met with a lot of people who are leading and building the project. I've also looked at the construction record, the project management, and how those factors have affected the, the cost and the timing of the project. I reviewed the original rationale, the analysis and estimates for the project, the contractual arrangements, and financing terms. I've also reviewed the contractual arrangement with Amero and the power purchase arrangement with Newfoundland and Labrador Hydro. Finally, I met with the federal government who provided the $5 billion federal loan guarantee on the project, and I spent countless hours with the leadership team here at Nelcor. In short, I reviewed the history of the project, assessing where we are today, trying to understand the issues on the project, and determining what needs to be adjusted or changed. So what have I found? In my opinion, the Muskrat Falls project was not the right choice for the power needs of this province. The original analysis did not reflect a complete picture of the costs, risks, and obligations faced upon Newfoundland and Labrador taxpayers and ratepayers. The generation and transmission project was much too large that was necessary to meet the energy requirements of the province. The original capital cost analysis, estimates, and schedule was very aggressive and overly optimistic. And this didn't account for many of the risks that were known or should have been known at the time. And the analysis finally relied on high energy prices, which were, which were projected to continue to rise. Last week, I announced changes to Nalco Energy and Hydro and the project execution team to bring additional focus and resources to generation and transmission. I have now have full confidence in this team. They are experienced, dedicated, capable people who have managed and executed the construction project despite the challenges they were faced and the pressures to achieve their unrealistic costs and schedule. I have separated the project into two components, power supply, which is the transmission component of the project, and power generation, which is the completion of the hydroelectric facility at Muskrat Falls, including the powerhouse and spillway components. I am confident that we will successfully complete the project and finish strong. But what does it mean for costs? Overall, the project cost for this project is now projected to be $9.1 billion be before financing costs. This projected cost is just that, projected. It is an estimate based on the information available to me, the identified risks to the project that we know today and applying my own judgment at the end. I can assure the people of this province that I have worked with the project team to have a thorough understanding of the risks that we can foresee at this point in time. I believe that the new projected costs are a realistic figure, the best I can provide at this point in time. With respect to the schedule, we anticipate that the transmission line from Churchill Falls to Muskrat and the Labrador Island Link will be completed and in service in the second quarter of 2018, approximately two years ahead of generation from Muskrat Falls itself, but one year later than the scheduled project as sanctioned. With respect to Muskrat Falls generating, first power is now expected in the third quarter of 2019. The project in service date as sanctioned was the fourth quarter of 2017. This in results in approximately two years delay in the completion of Muskrat Falls. What does all this mean? To date, we have spent or contractually obligated to spend over $6.7 billion on the project. If we held this project, we'd have, we would have spent $6.7 billion and would have to spend billions more to settle claims and bring the project to some conclusion. And, we'd have to, and we would not have a source of power, which is needed. It's important to note that Holy Road is at the end, or nearing the end, of its useful life, 
and needs to be replaced. And the energy from it needs to be replaced. We are contractually bound to provide AMERA with a significant amount of power for the next 35 years at no cost. Stopping the project is not a practical option. As of 2016, government's projected equity investment was $3.2 billion. As sanctioned, the equity investment was projected $1.8 billion. With the projected cost now at $9.1 billion, an additional $2 billion of equity is required. And overall, the, the projected cost with financing is now expected to be $11.7 billion. <clears throat> the additional equity to complete the project will require more borrowing on behalf of the government and associated cost of borrowing. And the corresponding electric rates are simply not affordable. Today, electric rates in 2021 are projected to be roughly 21.4 cents per kilowatt hour which is 6.3 cents more than forecasted when the project was sanctioned back in 2012. Over the next four years, my job is to reduce our requirements for additional equity in the province and find ways to provide additional revenues or reduce expenses related to this investment. We will focus on getting more value from the excess power and exploring new arrangements and longer term arrangements to secure as much additional re revenue as we can. We will work with our existing business partners, Amera and Hydro-Quebec, in hopes of doing that. We will work with the province to seek out options with respect to financing arrangements, potentially working with the federal government to secure backing for additional equity for the project <coughs> and reduce the requirements or demands on the province. We will ensure that all our plants are operating at peak performance, so we take full advantage of our energy resources to utilize for our own needs and sell what we can. In short, as CEO, my challenge is to ensure that come 2021, our electricity rates will be substantially less than I've just described. Thank you very much. So the total cost to finish the project is $11.4 billion. Do you have a total cost estimate for what it would cost no, nope, I don't. So how do you know that it's less expensive to finish than this subject? How do I know that it's not economic to build a transmission line to the moon? Because it's way out of it, way out of balance. In my judgment, so far off, I don't need to spend any money, waste time doing an analysis. Sir, is this project a boondoggle? Yes. Why? Right now, it is. My task is to ensure that in four years it will not be. How realistic do you think it will be to be able to significantly reduce that 21 cents a kilowatt hour that ratepayers will be facing? I will do my best. I think I make a substantial difference. And when you say substantial? What I would like to see, it may not be achievable, that our rates would be at least not higher than the average. That may be unrealistic. But certainly win in the pack of, rate, of electricity rates across the country. And to, you mentioned in your list of things that uh, possible things to do, talking to the federal government about an equity investment in the project? Well, provide provide more loan guarantees rather than the okay. equity from the province, sorry. Okay, so provide mo more loan guarantees yes. so that that would reduce the borrowing cost for the province then? Yes, but it increases the cost to, to uh, Nelcor. Because if we're substituting equity <coughs> with debt, there's more interest we have to pay. Right, so then it would, but then it's... Overall, it would be a benefit. The net benefit to Newfoundland totally is the difference in spread between the, what the province has to borrow at and what the feds can borrow at, or what you can borrow with the federal guarantee. That's a net benefit. You said you've met with the federal government. Are they open to that idea? I've had a tentative meeting. Uh, I was given a full hearing, and I'm positive. So you're positive what the federal government could do what to help out? Provide a more additional loan guarantee in lieu of having the province put in equity. Why do you think they'd want to do that at this point? I mean, how did you bolster your case for that request? The picture I portray, what the result is right now, imposes a severe hardship on consumers of this province. Mm -hmm. So I think they're, they're recognizing the reality 
and we'll try to help in the way they can. Can you offer any reason as to how this got so out of control to begin with? It starts off, it had, it was built on false assumptions, faulty assumptions, and it went from there. Yeah. The underlying is false, the assumpt false assumption here. And it contrasts with the assumption behind the upper. It made it, made it go back and say, if you look at the upper Churchill, which has always been a, being the bonnet of New Flanders, the underlying assumption in the upper Churchill was that back then energy rates would never rise. They were low, would never rise. It turns out they did rise, and New Flanders didn't have any investment there and didn't get the benefit of that. So they lost an opportunity. New Flanders, the upper Churchill was built by Rinko and Hydro Quebec. New Flanders were not out a penny. They didn't put any money into it, they didn't lose any money. But they lost the opportunity to make more money when energy prices rose. Ironically, the underlying assumption in this project is the reverse. Energy prices were high, and they assumed they would never go down. Not only were they high, but they would continue to rise. So if you had a holy root type plant, all the prices were going to go way up, that all terms were expensive. That if you have overbuilt your needs on a power plant, like Muspratt Falls, then in the future you could sell the excess energy at a profit. So the underlying assumption that energy the high energy prices would never go down. They have gone down. They haven't gone up, they've gone down. So that when you start off with false underpinnings, it makes it very difficult to recover. And Nalcor had, had not built a hydro plant of this size ever had not built any hydro plant in many years. So they were taking on a project without experience, and uh, that entailed risks. And a lot of the contractors have never been operated in North America. They never built a hydro plant in the extreme cold, let alone the walls of Labrador. So right from the get-go. And because the plant was just too big for our needs, they were not concerned, because, because the assumption was energy, high energy rates would rise, they were not concerned that the project was too big for our needs because we would make money on that. But we're only going to use one third of the power from this plant. We got to dispose of it two thirds. And so we spec by overbilling, we speculated on what would happen to energy prices. We speculated and we lost. Would you say that again? So I'm, I'm, I'm sure wondering, <coughs> you're saying now that we didn't have the expertise available, that we didn't put in the proper uh, efforts or understanding of the risks and costs early on, entirely contradictory to what the public was being told at the start of this project and the start of this process. So uh, are you still standing by that saying that essentially the folks who are speaking beforehand were out to lunch? You should never, re if you don't have the experience, never rely on consultants, first thing. If you don't have the experience in it, don't go at it. <coughs> Second thing is, in many cases, advisors are giving the underlying assumptions. They start with false assumptions. They're given the assumptions. What's the best choice if all prices go to, to the roof? So in many cases, the, the assumptions were inputs to these people. So the answer was preordained. They were determined by the assumptions they were given, as opposed to starting from scratch and saying, what would you do? Those assumptions are being put to them, though, but at the same time, people like, uh, you still have Gilbert Bennett leading up to one of the key parts of this project, and he was telling the public all throughout that they can have confidence in the work that's being done. So it seems like there is a divide between what people were told at the start of this project, what they're being told now, with the same stakes there. Is there a problem with that? I think that there's a big learning curve here. People are directed to one thing at one point in time, and that story changes. There's no question, there's been a steep learning curve here. But also, there's been a change in direction. One of the biggest changes I've seen in my career, in my own thinking, is that when I started in business, I thought it didn't matter who was at the helm. But the big organization 
had momentum would achieve a good result. It really depends on who's in charge. The direction that's given to the people. The assumptions are accepted right now. I take ownership of the estimates I give here. That is my decision, ultimately. I get input from people, then I tell them what I want. And good people will go out and do what it is I say I want done. So it's hard to criticize people at a different point in their career, in their development. Hard to criticize them at a different point in time when circumstances are different, and assumptions have changed. All I know at this point in time, I have a very experienced individual who's done his darnest to do the best for the project and the people, and I have every confidence in him. With these numbers, of course, uh, the question uh, that I have is why Muskrat Falls? Is it fair to say that uh, it was uh, the price we paid to try to get back at Quebec? Why Muskrat Falls with these numbers? It's an expensive price. It may, I can't speak for what people were thinking at the time. All I know is that you could have exported the power from Churchill Falls, yes. There's no need to build a transmission line to Maritimes. I mean, there's open access today. So you could have gotten the same, essentially the same revenue by selling to Hydro Quebec without building the Maritime Link. It's fair to say, though, sir, that you've never been a fan of this project. Is that correct? That's correct. And essentially because you always thought it was too big? Like, how did it first strike you back in 2012 when it was sanctioned? It struck me uh, that the cost, that's when the cost was low, that it would probably cost what it's going to cost today. So I'm not at all surprised that the cost is where it is. I think, and I said, the online factor here was that the initial cost edges were low. Uh, that's one factor. The other thing was the assumptions reflecting energy prices. Energy prices go up and down. And long-term estimates are very risky. You know, you're better off to, to do something which meets your needs and not speculate on energy prices. You know, we're not all in the oil business. We're not in the energy export business. We weren't in the export business. We had a small amount of floor Churchill. Um, to build this project entailed a lot of risks. <coughs> and it could have worked out. I could have been wrong. I've been wrong before. I could be wrong now. Uh, but it was, a, it was a, a gamble that's gone against us. You say your mission now for the next four years is to reduce the end cost to consumers, and that's mainly through trying to find long-term buyers. Now, it seems like before Muskrat Falls was even announced, the government, as far as I know, was trying to find long-term buyers and didn't get any. So what are your hopes that you can find any? Well, I've dealt with a lot of players. I, I think, you know, we, we'll talk to Amera, we'll talk to Hydro-Quebec. Uh, we're talking to Amera, we're talking to Hydro-Quebec. What are you But talking? also, re restructure the concept. There's many things you can do. We have four years in order to address, you know, the rates. A lot of things can be done in four years. It can't be done in two months that I've had so far. So I'm going to step back, uh, rethink projects there. How can we utilize those facilities differently? Uh, are there revenue options we haven't been pursued? Um, and even, even in the two months of here, for example, now that we have a gap between the transmission coming on the stream in the generation. The first thing we're going to do is prepare the transmission system to take delivery and recall power from the upper Churchill. That'll be cheap in the short term. But of course, after Mustrat comes on stream, it'll be surplus, and you go back to selling it again for 3.5 cents. But in the meantime, we're going to, that's the cheapest source of power we'll have if we utilize the line, because the line's already there. Uh, so that's one thing we can do in two years. That'll help bring down either the costs or some way on, on muskrat because we apply it to the project. So something we do in the short term, you know, we're talking to the federal government, see if we can get the loan guarantee. To ben so I look at this from the provincial perspective. I have a mandate with respect to Nelcor, but we have to be mindful that, you know, it's the, the taxpayer and, and the ratepayer are almost one and the same. So I'm working closely with the provincial government, see how we maximize the overall benefit or, you know, reduce the overall cost. And, um, Federal government's going to be part of that. A business partner's going to be part of that. A personal rethink of the business model and the project is going to be part of that. And maybe there's other things we can do. Maybe now that we've got facilities here, maybe there's other small hardware projects we can develop. I don't know. I haven't even started to look at it. It's just, 
something I will look at in the next few years. The risks being what they are, though, is this something that you could see if this goes badly could, could ruin the province or what sort of long-term fiscal impact concerns you most? Look, you look at those numbers, you have to be concerned. You have to be concerned if you're a taxpayer, a ratepayer, a citizen of this province, or the government, or the CEO of Nelcor. Can you comment on how, if and how, a loss in the case between CFL Co. and Hydro Quebec would affect production at Muskrat Falls and the energy rates that you put up here? We have a number of ongoing disputes with Hydro Quebec. One of the things I'm going to try to do is see if we can establish a normal business relationship with them. There's a lot of opportunities. We've spent hundreds, well, tens, certainly tens of millions of dollars in legal disputes to no benefit. So are you looking to settle the water management dispute then? I'm not going to settle everything. I can settle if it makes good business sense. And do you, are you confident you can do that? I'm confident I can do something. <laughs> so you're looking to settle the, the dispute over the Churchill Falls renewal contract and all the other legal disputes you're looking to settle those with Hydro Quebec? I will try to establish, rather than deal with any particular contract, there's some things you can't resolve. You need to court, go court about and fight it out. I'm a lawyer as well as an engineer. I recognize you need to do that. But surely there are other issues we, we can deal with on a business-like basis, whether it's Hydro-Quebec, any other player. And so all I'm saying is that I will take a business-like approach to see if there's things we can do. I mean, all too often, people treat these relationships as zero-sum games. Well, if that were the case, in business, you'd never do a deal with anybody. In business, you do a deal because both parties benefit. And that's what I mean by a business-like relationship. You know, we can benefit, they can benefit. You know, we need, to, at this point in time, we need to look at all options. I mean, instead of, when this thing started, I would look at the option of, of uh, stopping Muskrat. I had to look at it. Didn't make any sense. Okay, I'm going to look at all options I have in the next four years. All options. Now, ultimately, a lot of these things will, you know, be uh, public policy decisions, and all I can do is bring them to the province and have them decide. But my mandate is to explore, to seek. Start, sound like Star Trek. <laughs> You're still negotiating with Astaldi um, to on a number of disputes related to the contract. How much more could that push up the costs that you see here today? I'm very hesitant to answer that because we are in a major dispute. And anything I say, I'm sure, will be recorded and used in negotiations. All I can tell you is that numbers I've put in here, I've put in an estimate. They do not reflect the worst case or the best case. And, you know, at this point in time, we haven't made a lot of progress in the negotiations with Stoli. And they are the single biggest remaining uncertainty. In some ways, it's almost like b binary. We either settle or we don't with them. And that has a big impact on the cost projections. Is there any timeline for those talks? Um... There's no time deadline. We're talking now. I take it there's been no ruling on the uh, Churchill Falls renewal yet? No. And in my discussions with Hydro Quebec, we just said, like, any court cases heard, we'll let them be decided. Anything that we would sort of contemplate doing, we'll hold off for the time being and see if we can't have reasonable negotiations. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.